First appearing in the 2015 video game Halo 5 Guardians, the planet Sanghelios is a hot and humid world of tropical wetlands and inhospitable deserts. It was once within the dominion of the fanatical Covenant and is the homeworld of one of the Covenant's primary constituent spacefaring civilizations, the Sangheili, who numbered over 8.1 billion before a brutal civil war cut their numbers in half around the Earth year 2558. The Sangheili are a bipedal species of sentient, saurian-like beings standing at an average height of 2.5 meters and having an average weight of around 160 kilograms. Their most notable features include their digitigrade legs, tetradactyl hands, each with two fingers and two opposable thumbs, and their lack of a lower jaw, having instead four quadruple-jointed mandibles, each with a set of sharp teeth suggesting that they feed by swallowing their food whole. The planet Sanghelios is a wet terrestrial 18% larger than Earth and 1.91 times as massive. Its mean density is calculated to be around 6.4 grams per cubic centimeter, which is 16% denser than Earth's and abnormally high for a terrestrial planet of its size, suggesting it formed with a very large nickel-iron core. The higher mass and density gives Sanghelios a surface gravity of 1.375 g and an escape velocity of 14.23 km per second. Dark oceans cover around two-thirds of the planet's surface and harbor the majority of its biodiversity, with only the coastal areas of its five continents readily habitable by land-dwelling organisms. The planet suffers from violent storms that whip the desert sands high into the planet's atmosphere and give its skies their characteristic orange or reddish hue. Sanghelios' atmosphere consists of nitrogen, oxygen, and argon in a similar concentration to Earth's. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 90% that of Earth, and the temperature is reported to range from negative 5 degrees to a searing 96 degrees Celsius. Sanghelios orbits its parent star in approximately 583.3 days, or 474.55 local days given the planet's 29.5-hour synodic rotation period. Very little is known about the star system Sanghelios resides in, except that it is the fourth planet orbiting the star Urs, which is itself the largest member of a trinary star system along with the stars Phide and Juri. It is not currently known how many planets exist in this system, and the lack of astrophysical data for the system's stars makes it difficult to accurately determine Sanghelios' orbital radius and dynamics. Whereas the temperatures Sanghelios endures are certainly not unrealistically high for a terrestrial planet, they may very well be too high for a life that is similar to our own, which the Sanghelii appear to be. It is possible that the most extreme temperatures listed for the planet only occur periodically when one or both of the other stars in the system makes its closest approach to the planet. But there are numerous visuals within Halo Canon that suggest these near-boiling temperatures are always present, leading to the planet having an extremely hostile climate. Such high temperatures would drive the evaporation of large quantities of water from the planet's equatorial region and form a band of thick cloud cover. Beneath this wide tropical band, torrential rains would be common, leading to increased erosion of the land masses present there, but keeping temperatures comparatively mild. However, beyond the equatorial tropical zone, the mid-latitude deserts would be a veritable hellscape, so intensely hot and dry that surface life would be virtually impossible. Interestingly, the planet's polar region could be the most habitable in terms of temperature, but sustaining agriculture in these areas would be challenging due to the low light levels and isolated circulation patterns, producing a limited water cycle. Civilization settling along the equatorial region seems the most tenable, but life there would not be easy. Residents of this area would endure nearly constant torrential rains, leading to frequent floods and landslides. Caverns formed from this runoff would offer some shelter from the storms, but the constant soil erosion and filtered sunlight would make vegetation, and therefore agriculture, tenuous. The planet is orbited by two major moons, both said to be massive enough to retain a significant atmosphere, though it is not known whether these atmospheres are naturally occurring or generated and maintained by some advanced technology. 
Suban is believed to be the innermost moon and is said to be red in coloration, while Kikost, the outermost moon, is referred to as having a silvery appearance. The bright monochrome surface of Kikost suggests that it could possess a similar composition to the regolith found on Earth's moon Luna, while Suban's red surface may indicate that it is covered in a layer of iron oxide, giving it more in common with the planet Mars. This disparity also suggests that the moons were formed as a result of two separate collision events in the planet's early history. The presence of two moons is reported to have major tidal effects on St. Helios, regularly raising large ocean tides and inundating vast areas of the planet's coastlines. So how does St. Helios compare to a realistic planet? Its mass and size are well within the limits of an Earth-like terrestrial planet, but its mean density is unusually high. Not high enough that I'm going to fault it, but high enough that it pushes its realism well into the questionable range. Plus one point. Aside from its orbital period, there is no data given for St. Helios' orbit, so zero points. St. Helios' climate is exceedingly hot probably too hot to exist as described. It's possible that with more data for the planet's atmospheric parameters, there may be a stable configuration for its climate, but as it stands now, its climate would very likely destabilize and undergo a runaway greenhouse effect, leaving the planet barren and uninhabitable. Negative one point. Like so many other planets from science fiction, St. Helios possesses multiple large spherical moons. Unfortunately, this is extremely unlikely due to the dynamics of how terrestrial moons form, and the moons having two different colorations, suggesting that they formed from two different collision events, actually makes them even more implausible. Negative one point. It's really disappointing to me that the creators of St. Helios placed it into an interesting trinary star system and then neglected to provide even the most basic information about the stars it orbits. It is a major missed opportunity. Zero points. With a total of negative one point, the planet St. Helios from Halo receives an F grade. This is an upsetting score for what is probably one of the most unique and detailed alien worlds to be featured in the Halo universe. But unfortunately, its creators tried too hard to make it appear alien and ended up pushing it beyond plausibility. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the planet St. Helios from Halo. From here, I'll be plotting a course toward another alien star system, and I hope to see you there. Farewell until we meet again in Ur's everlasting light.